Indian logistics company Ravigo is looking for buyers. Welcome to Backstage with Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host. And I didn't realize this about the company, but they are cash strapped. They've actually already sold off 80% of their truck fleet. And now they're looking for someone to buy the company at a heavily discounted valuation. And this is a big discount from their September of 2019 valuation of $1.05 billion, which of course made them a unicorn company. Now though, it looks like their valuation has decreased considerably considerably to just $300 million, making them an ex-unicorn. Now, why is this happening? Well, since July of 2019, Rovigo has been looking to raise a round of funding to sustain their operations, to sustain their burn. And they haven't been able to do that. And so as a result, they've had to cut costs, or in this case, sell off assets in order to sustain themselves. But now it's gotten to the point where they're looking for buyers. They're in early stage talks with Flipkart's logistics arm, eCart, and also First Cry, according to Economic Times. Now, selling the company for just $300 million is a pretty Pretty big change in strategy for Ravigo. Just three months ago, Deepak Garg, one of the co-founders of the company, said that Ravigo would be doing a pre-IPO round in 2022 and then taking the company public in between 18 and 24 months. Now, since that announcement, the company has actually raised external capital. In fact, just this last Tuesday, the 23rd of August, the company closed their Series H round of $2 million. But this doesn't seem like a pre-IPO round, but rather just a life support round where the company is trying to sustain their operations operations until the point where they're going to be acquired by a larger company. Now, obviously, Rovigo is a beloved company. They brought something that was much needed to India's logistics space, humane treatment of Indian truck drivers. And so it's really sad to see them going down this path. Obviously, they can't help it. The COVID-19 pandemic really disrupted their business. And full stack logistics companies like Rovigo, especially ones with their own fleet, were the worst affected by COVID-19. And according to one anonymous source, many trucking companies have suffered a a great loss of business and were burdened with monthly fixed costs such as vehicle EMIs, manpower, and maintenance. All right, next up, just a quick update from our side here at Backstage with Millionaires. So we have sent offers now to two people who applied to work for Backstage with Millionaires when we initiated our hiring process a couple of weeks ago. And hopefully both of them are gonna be joining our team from the 1st of September. One of them is in the researching slash script writing department, and one of them is gonna be in the videography slash video editing department. And we're still looking for really talented and enthusiastic people to join our team, uh, specifically people who are opening uh, open to relocating to Bengaluru or people who already live in the city. So if that's you, then make sure to click on the link in the pinned comment down below to our Google form and just give us a little bit of basic information about yourself. All right, next up, let's move into our bird's eye segment now because at least 12 Indian startups have raised more than a million dollars this week with $281 million being raised across India's entire startup ecosystem. So fintech startups led the charge this week. They raised 35% of all the funds. That's $99.2 million. And the leader here was Pune-based instant loan startup Early Salary, which raised $97 million. After fintech, we have one Mumbai-based startup. They're into consumer electronics after-sales support. They're called Servify. And they raised 23% of all the funds this week. That's $65 million. Up next, we have Bengaluru-based food and beverage company Hector Beverages. They've raised 17% of all the funds this week. That's $50 million and they're the parent company of beverage brand Paper Boat. And then finally, we have Bengaluru-based health tech startup Mojo Care. They've raised 7% of all the funds this week. That's $20.6 million. And they're a judgment-free all-in-one wellness platform for health ailments that most people find embarrassing, like ED, graying hair and hair loss, and dandruff, among others. So as far as Indian startup funding goes, this week wasn't bad. $281 million is a 54% increase from last week when Indian startups raised just $100 and $82 million, and that $281 million number is going to go up by the time you watch this video. I'm recording this video on Thursday, but if you want up-to-date information on what's going on in India's startup ecosystem when it comes to fundraising, then make sure to sign up for our weekly newsletter. You can find a link to that in the description or pinned comment down below. All right, next up, let's move on to our startup spotlight now. And you might have noticed that last week we actually took a break from this segment. So what was happening is that we were internally discussing on what we want our definition of startup to be here at Backstage with Millionaires. We've kind of realized that there's no globally or even locally here in India agreed upon definition for what a startup is. For example, take a look at this tweet from Nikhil Kamat. And he tweeted this just this last Tuesday on the 23rd of August saying, the new definition of a startup could be companies where the founder 
members are actively involved. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about this definition because that would make, for example, Meta a startup and a bunch of other massive companies where the founders are still actively involved. So I think you've got to draw the line somewhere. And so internally, we settled on a combination of Alex Wilhelm's 5100-500 rule. So if a startup crosses $50 million in revenue per year, 100 employees, or a $500 million valuation, then they're no longer a startup. And also the government of India's definition too, where if a company crosses 10 years since registration or 100 crore rupees in annual turnover, which is just another way in this case of saying revenue, then you're also no longer a startup. So the working BWM hybrid startup definition that we've come up with is the 100, 100, 500 rule. So the startup needs to have less than 100 crore rupees in turnover, or again, revenue, less than 100 employees, and a valuation that's less than $500 million. And let's also add one requirement here, which is, as Nikhil said, the founder needs to be actively involved in the company. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, this week I want to highlight Mumbai-based Deserve. And just a little heads up here, in the past they did sponsor one of our videos, but this video itself is not sponsored by Deserve. So they seem to fall into our BWM startup definition. Their revenue is estimated to be $5 million, according to Zoom Info, although I would take that with a grain of salt. That's 39 crore rupees, so a far cry from the 100 crore rupee limit. They have 76 employees, according to LinkedIn, and they're estimated to be worth $100 million, according to FinTracker. And also, of course, the founders are actively involved. As we mentioned in News Video 132, Deserve recently raised their Series A. That's $20.7 million. Now, the company is less than a year and a half old at this point, and we can see that from their MCA LLP master data. Deserve was founded in April of 2021, and the investors for this Series A round, according to Crunchbase, were Whiteboard Capital, Matrix Partners, GTM Ventures, Elevation Capital, and Axel. So some pretty big names in the VC ecosystem. And Ntracker detailed the shareholding structure of the company. You can pause the video if you want to take a look at that. And the biggest shareholder is one of the founders, Sandeep, which is actually a pretty good thing to see founder control. Okay, so now let's briefly talk about what Deserve is. So this is an investing platform that's solving the problem of choice for inexperienced investors in India. So platforms like Grow, Zerodha, Upstock, Scriptbox, Kuvera, and Smallcase have been operating with this assisted DIY model where individual investors get to choose what to invest in. And having that autonomy is great for people who know what they're doing, but if they don't, it can actually be pretty overwhelming and sometimes have less than ideal results. Now, this DIY approach is often advertised as a feature. For example, if you go to Grow's website, right there on the front page, it says your money, your choice. But the reality is that this isn't really something that wealthy people typically do. They don't usually spend all of their time moving money around and keeping an eye on the stock market. They just hand their money over to a hedge fund or some other professionally managed fund, and their money grows without a lot of input from their end. So Deserve is trying to put that same experience of setting it and forgetting it into the hands of everyday people. That is their unique value proposition. Now, one important question to ask here is, is this a scalable model? Is this something that they're going to be able to sustain into the long-term future? As their investor base begins to grow, will they be able to sustainably hire more and more people to personally manage the funds of all of these customers? Or will cracks begin to show as time goes on? Well, we're just going to have to wait and see. But I wish Deserve all the best and look forward to keeping an eye on their progress. All right, next up, just a couple of quick updates for you guys. First of all, Bengaluru-based e-commerce enablement platform ShopX has officially shut down. At its peak, the startup was worth more than $100 million. They'd raised $54 million from investors, and now they filed an application for insolvency and bankruptcy. So back in 2015, when ShopX was founded, they were following a similar model to Urdan, basically offering an online B2B e-commerce platform. However, by mid of 2021, it became clear that they weren't going to succeed in that space. The margins were just too thin. And of course, they had competition from other B2B e-commerce platforms. And so they pivoted to an assisted e-commerce solution, which included sourcing, supply chain, and credit lines, but that didn't work out either. So once again, they pivoted this time into the consumer internet space with the launch of a cashback app, but this also did not work out. So it's been a slow and steady decline for this startup, unfortunately. All right, next up, things don't seem to be going well at Unacademy owned ReLevel. So the idea behind ReLevel, which was launched in May of 2021, was to help job seekers to qualify for tech industry roles through assessment tests for programming, product development, and more. 
Now, to understand what's gone wrong at ReLevel, we first need to understand how the company is actually making money because they're not taking fees from students for taking their tests. That's completely free. And they're also not taking commissions from recruiters who are hiring the students that are passing their tests. Instead, they're making money from courses. So basically for students who aren't able to pass ReLevel's tests, which are actually pretty hard, ReLevel sells them courses and that's where they make their revenue. However, the revenue from these courses has started to shrink now as the ed tech market becomes less and less attractive to consumers who are doing more education offline. And of course, we also know that Unacademy and all of its subsidiary companies collectively as a group are aiming towards profitability. And so because ReLevel's revenues have been declining, the company is now forced to cut costs, not by laying employees off, but rather shuffling them into other parts of Unacademy. So currently ReLevel has about 700 employees, but now 100 employees are being shuffled and 80% of these have already found new roles within Unacademy and 15 to 20 employees have said that they've declined these roles. All right, next up, I've saved the best for last year. ONDC is going to be publicly available from September of this year, 2022. And if you haven't watched the video that we made explaining what ONDC is all about, then you can find that video up here. According to ONDC's chief business officer, the network is days away from opening to the public. In fact, by the time you're watching this video, it might already be publicly available. And currently, at the time of me filming this video, ONDC has been running as a pilot in a couple of Indian cities. And so officials at the network are focusing on improving customer experience, building ONDC compatible tools for small sellers, and also weeding out challenges within the network. All right, that is all the startup news that I have for you guys this week. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and that you learned a lot from it. Big thanks now to all of our Backstage with Millionaires members, our unicorns, our decacorns, and our hectacorns. And of course, also big thanks to you for watching this video through to the end. And one more thing, I just remember to mention this. I know a lot of people wanted to see a studio tour slash an office tour from us. We're working on one. Uh, we're still getting the office together. So installing things like an AC unit, a CCTV camera, putting the desks and chairs and all that stuff, painting the walls. I mean, there's a lot going on, so we don't want to prematurely uh, show you guys a space that's not ready yet. But once it's ready, we'll definitely make that video and probably document some of the process that it took to get the space to where it is. And I hope you guys look forward to seeing that video soon. All right, see you in the next one.